Hello. Today I am of course showcasing some more piggy build mode concepts. I dropped some emoji hints in my discord server, but they only accounted for two concepts, so I'm happy to be showing you what those referred to as well as some others. I also fixed a few bugs, like not clipping not working, but I am also noticing some more, like links working but not appearing. But anyways, let's start on the concepts. First off, I added a feature that I originally had but then removed, but then saw that epic underscore tank added it to build mode. The material balls change color when you select a new color. The next concept I'm going to show was the color palette in the emoji hint. You can now use hex codes instead of choosing from a selection of colors. This allows for more colors to use and to easily retrieve a basic RGB color. However, I understand that not everybody knows how to use hex codes which is why I'm thinking of adding a color wheel. This was suggested by Vantoanv, user, RJ1UG7SL7M, and Dejudo5778. But on to the next concept. This one is in beta testing and I'm not sure if it completely works yet so you should use it with caution. It is a transparency input. You can now place blocks so that they are partially or fully transparent. This does not only apply to blocks though, it also applies to more complex designs like levers and stuff. Again, this is still in the beta stage, so don't expect too much from it. It does not work on the terrain block or any block that is already fully transparent, click trigger, invisible powered block, etc. This was suggested by Miss Gaming Online. But onto our next concept, we have the colorable keycard as well as the keycard panel. This is linkable, so once the panel is activated, it sends a signal. As you could probably guess, you have to use the corresponding colored keycard on it for it to work. Let's test. As you could see, accurately colored hint bubbles appear. Like how it is in regular Piggy, you can either click the panel with the right keycard in your inventory or hold the keycard out and touch the panel. This was suggested by Tricky Phase 37, The Train Overlord, Goofy 1084, Splatcraft 1999, Alexander Avila 4701, and Flukas. The next concept is a player configuration block. This will allow you to change some of the player's properties, like speed, jump power, and transparency. It is linkable, and whoever activates it gets configured. There is also an option to configure everybody though. One other option that I added is the ability to smoothly change the properties. If you don't want to suddenly become transparent or something, you can use this option to smoothly glide into transparency. As you can see, I immediately became partially transparent because I clicked the button. Let's also make it so that I turn really fast. Voila! Now, last but not least, let's make the jump power higher. Let's change it from 50 to 250, which is the maximum. Whoa! By the way, this is what the other two emojis in my hint were referring to. Now let's test the smooth option. As you can see, instead of immediately getting configured, I gradually became more and more transparent, quicker, and my jump power increased. Let's now change the tween duration to 5 seconds so we could notice the change better. And there you have it. This time, it took us 5 seconds to fully get configured. Somebody in my server posted an image from Epic Tank's concept game, so I used the player invis block idea and just added onto it. But onto our next concept, we have the damage and heal block. In case you didn't already guess, upon activation, these can subtract from your health or add onto your health. The only settings are whether it heals slash damages every player or not, and the amount, on a scale of 1 to 100, to add slash subtract from the health. As you can see, as I click the damage button, my health decreases by 10%. However, if I click the heal button, my health starts increasing by 10%. You can use this damage block as a powered kill block by setting the damage amount to 100. Also, for anybody wondering about the next build mode Roblox Studio tutorial, the estimated release date will probably be in the next 7 days or so. I think I'm going to do painting slash picking colors and materials in that part. Thank you to Madia Fire Coldface for suggesting these blocks. They sent me a whole document and these were on it. Now on to our next concept, we have an electrical box. This is the event found in the breakout and mansion chapters. The associated items are colorable wires. We'll get into more depth and detail once we start explaining how it works. As you can see, there are initially two settings, how many wires are required and whether you need specific colors or not. Let's connect it to a powered block so we can see when the electrical box is activated. Now, let's set down four wires. We're not going to worry about the color yet.
As you can see, when clicking or touching the box with the wire equipped, it gets placed in the box regardless of its color. Now, let's just change the required wires amount to two. As you can see, two wires are already put into place. All we need to do is insert two. Now, let's work with the specific color setting. When you click the button, for more settings appear. These are the wire colors needed. If the required wires amount is 1 to 3, then only that number of color settings will appear. We set the required amount to 3, so one wire is already in place. However, when we try to use our white wires, they will not work because we need the other colors. The new hex code feature is useful for this so that you can make sure that the colors actually match. As you can see, the wires actually do work now because they are the right colors. If we used any color other than red, blue, or green, it would not be accepted. Let's experiment with some more colors though. Rather than just using these four default ones, we can require two wires and make those two wires cyan and magenta for this example. Perfect. I do have some more concepts to show, but I forgot to do all of them in one recording, so you're going to see two other recordings. The electrical box concept was suggested by Howdy. Now, onto the last concept shown in this recording, we have the copy tool. Unfortunately, it's not the copy tool you guys wish for, but I still think this could be useful. It works as a pick tool, but rather than selecting colors and materials, it selects the asset. You need to have the build tool equipped to use it. Hold shift, then right click on a part to select its asset. This is also a beta feature but I think it should completely work. Tell me if you find any bugs with it or anything else in the concept game though. Now, let's move on to the next recording. I added the first decoration into the game, but it's not accessible to everybody. Somebody in my Discord server asked to add a Germa head decor into the game, in official piggy, the Germa head is a block that only Minitune can access. But if you noticed, there's a meet the owner badge that you can obtain if we are in the same menu server. Somebody else suggested to only give the Germa head to people who own that badge, so that's what I did. As you can see, you get this Germa head mesh, and it's also scalable. Don't feel bad if you don't have it because it's more of a trophy rather than a privilege. I don't see how this could be useful in anybody's maps lol. Now, for our final recording we have one more concept. Our final concept for this video is the toggle gate, suggested by Splatcraft1999. They stated it well so I'm just going to copy what they said. When given a powered input, this gate would toggle its output. Unpowering it wouldn't do anything. If it was off before it was powered, it would be on after and stay that way until powered again. As you can see, when activating the lever twice, it would turn on the first time it was activated, then turn off the second time. This is a pretty cool concept, and I imagine it being used with the button. Instead of turning off when the button deactivates, it stays on until the button activates again. I hope you understand this concept because it's pretty confusing to explain. Since the toggle gate is a, well, gate, it also releases an output signal to whatever it's connected to. For example, let's connect it to an OR gate and see what happens. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and please comment down any concept suggestions you have. Bye.